We all begin at the beginning, even Scotty. So Scott, tell us about the most challenging uh, experience you've had, uh, like sort of the hardest experience you've had in your bartending career. Yeah, um, well, I wanted to share this, uh, and I'm glad you asked, because we don't start out being good. We all suck in the beginning in some way or another. And, uh, and boy, I, I really did in this situation. Um, was in Hawaii. Uh, I was actually supposed to be there for a week. Uh, and I actually saw, it's another story, but I saw a pipeline, I saw North Shore in the wintertime. I went, oh my God, <laughs> I got to be able to learn how to do that. So I sold my ticket and bought a surfboard and I ended up staying a year. Uh, anyway, that's how sort of was the beginning of a lot of things in my life. And one thing is I, I got my first job at a nightclub. Uh, I was hired uh, by Hot Rods and uh, it's actually gone since then. Uh, there's still scruples actually, there's a bar out there. Uh, Freddie Peluso, uh, I remember he was a good guy and he used to, it's a long time ago, I don't know if you ever see this, sorry Fred, but he used to wear these big yellow jump track suits. And uh, anyway, it was, it, was, it was a good time. I got hired, it was a brand new nightclub, spent like $2 million at the time, and it was uh, a 300 people cattle call for, for the bartenders. They hired 80 people for basically a week tryout. And uh, it was really tough because they gave us a list of 80 drinks one night. They said, okay, you made it, made the cut for 80, come back tomorrow, and we're going to, we're going to start training. So uh, there was uh, a bunch of different bars we actually trained in at Scruples, and uh, they had it separated into bartenders, waitresses, and, uh, and barbacks, porters. So what we did is they had us all separated around, and the waitress would have to uh, get a call order, had a, a list of four drinks, and there was a very specific call order. It was like 17 lists. It had to be bottled beer, and then it had to be, God, I can't remember what it was, it was a long time ago, but uh, basically bottle beer first and ice cream drinks or draft last. So uh, that's the idea. More than that, it also had to be in each liquor because the well was set up in a certain way for all the bartenders uh, because there was actually five waitresses that I had to serve on top of, uh, of the whole bar. It was, it was a challenging, and I remember the, the, the head bartender, Eddie, Eddie was tough. Uh, I wonder what Eddie's doing now. Um, anyway, he's, uh, he was a good guy, and he was being exper very experienced, and he was tough on the waitress. So basically, they would have to create this, uh, this, this drink list, only to four, four numbers, four, four drinks, come up, say that verbally to the bartender, to me, and the porters had set up a mock bar, it was all juices and stuff, and I had to make, uh, I had to make the drinks with these new recipes, so I, which I'd learned the night before. Uh, I'd never done physical verbal or verbal ordering. I always dealt off the ticker tape because I dealt with waitresses, but I never really had people other than five people at my bar at Fog and Suds. Um, so to go from having always, like I could have 50 orders on there, but it's right in front of me. I can always go back to and look at it. I never had the verbal thing. It was all new recipes and it freaked me out. Um, literally went to came my time and I just sucked. I was, I was brutal. I stunk up the joint. By far, I was the absolutely the worst bartender there, bar nothing. Uh, that really threw me. Uh, and there was nowhere to hide. We were there all morning training, and there was an afternoon group uh, that came in, and I was, I was brutal. Uh, I remember, honestly, I went back to my apartment, and I think it was the first thing that I'd ever really been not good at very quickly. Uh, and it really, I didn't know what to think about it. I, I actually cried. I went back and I cried for half an hour. I was like, I don't know how to deal with this. It was a new, new experience. And, uh, you know, sort of finished that up and I went, well, I don't want to go back there, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? They all, you know, they all know I'm an idiot and I'm just, oh, I looked horrible. There's nowhere to hide. Well, yeah, yeah, I was 20, yeah. That's another story. Um, but uh, you know way too much about me. Uh, but I ended up, I decided, well, Am I gonna, is that going to be it? Well, I didn't want it to be, so I decided to sort of tuck tail, my tail between my legs and I went back. Uh, I asked the manager, uh, James, I remember, uh, I said, you know, can I have a few minutes of your time? And he's like, yeah, what, like you're back? And I said, well, I, I know I was horrible, I was the worst here and I, I, I want to ask for another chance. Um, if, if you'll let me, I'd like to come back and I'd like to, to practice with the afternoon group as well. You don't have to pay me for any of this training the whole week. I'll come in the morning and I'll come in the afternoon on my own time. And by the end of the week, um, th then you decide if I'm to make because I know that, I'm, that you, you don't even want me here now. Just give me one more chance and let me work. He's like, all right. And he, and he did. And I worked really hard. And by the end, 
uh, I made the cut down to 40 bartenders, so they cut 40 people away, and, uh, and I made it. Um, so I don't really know where I came from, but um, it floored me, and then, and then it pissed me off that I sucked, and that I wasn't going to really deal with that, so I, I went and worked really hard. So. Cool. Yeah, but it was tough still, the hardest thing probably that I've ever dealt with in a professional situation, because it, it just hit me, it hit me so, so close to home.